Hello YouTube, I'm Toby. Now today we have yet another benchmarking video and this one will be on the AMD Sembron 3850 and the uh, EVGA GTX 550 Ti. First off, let's talk about the elephant in the room, my uh, homemade test bench here. I still don't yet have a case for this uh, system, so this test bench will have to do for now. As earlier mentioned, the uh, processor in this build is the AMD Sempron 3850. It's a quad-core processor. It's clocked at 1.3 gigahertz, and it's from 2014, so it's starting to get a bit old. The graphics card we'll be using is the EVGA GTX 550 Ti. It's got one gigabyte of GDDR5, and it's from 2011, so it's actually older than the uh, Sempron, but. I figured it might be fun to see what these two can do when they work together. The motherboard in this build is the ASUS AM1IA. And the reason I felt like it's important to uh, introduce the motherboard is because this motherboard only has a PCIe times 4 slot, so we might see some uh, bottlenecks, bottlenecks there. Introducing the rest of the system, we've got 4GB of DDR3 RAM, it's clocked at 1333 MHz. The SSD we'll be using is a Kingfast 120GB SSD. The power supply is a Corsair 550W power supply board used. And the operating system we'll be running this on is Windows 10 Pro. The benchmarks we'll be running are uh, the Cinebench uh, test, OpenGL, Resident Evil 6 benchmarking tool, CSGO, Counter-Strike Source, Subnautica, Fortnite. And I'm also going to run the uh, user benchmarking tool. Now keep in mind, I'm trying to stray away from just pointing the camera at the screen while I'm uh, recording benchmarks. So in this run I decided to run Fraps, and Fraps does take some of the uh, frame rate off, but we're talking 4 FPS maximum. Starting out with Cinebench R15, um, we see all our 4 cores uh, working fine. Um, in this run I did point the camera at the screen, as you can see there's a huge glare and this is why I turned to Fraps in the uh, later benchmarks. Anyway, we ended up with a score of 108 uh, Cinebench points, which is what this processor usually gets, so there's no surprise there. Running the OpenGL test, it looked really fine in the beginning, but after a while it started to slow down and we ended with a score of 15 frames per second. Next up, I decided to run the Resident Evil 6 benchmarking tool. For those that follow me, they all know that I like this tool. I use it pretty much every time I benchmark. I actually made two runs, one on low, which got a uh, score of 3480, and I actually also ran the uh, the benchmark with medium settings, and we ended with a score of 3504, so that's kind of funny. Moving on to some gaming benchmarks, uh, let's run Counter-Strike Source. I set the settings to medium, and I started out by running the benchmarking tool that's included in the game. Now this gave us a score of 117 frames per second, which I initially thought was, was very good until I actually fired up the game. Now the game runs with the bots and we're running Assault and we're running somewhere between 30 and 60 frames per second. Now keep in mind Fraps is, as mentioned earlier, taking the edge off the frame rate, but nonetheless I also ran it without Fraps running and I got somewhere between 30 and 60 frames per second, so just barely playable. Now seeing what happened in Counter-Strike Source, I was hesitant to give CSGO a chance, but figured I might as well try it, and I set the settings to low, and I started fired up a bot match in DDoS 2, and well, disappointment ensues, we're seeing a frame rate somewhere between 10 and 40 frames per second, which means that this game is pretty much unplayable on this system, and I'm really sad about that, but is what it is. I also decided to run Subnautica. I ran low settings and I really didn't have high hope, high hopes for it. And we honestly had a frame rate somewhere between 15 and 35 frames per second, which is quite low to be quite honest, but nonetheless at times it seemed playable, but then again it's mostly unplayable. Now when I first built the system, I was honestly expecting it to be able to play Fortnite. And I was kind of hoping I'd be able to put together a cheap system that could play Fortnite and then sell it, but... Yeah, I was uh, disappointed to say the least. But I did set the settings to low, and as you can probably see from the Fraps footage, it's doing very bad, very, very, very bad. 
I mean, we're getting somewhere between 0 and 30 frames per second with some huge stuttering issues. I mean, sometimes I thought the game was about to crash, and then it didn't crash, and then I landed and it got killed pretty much instantly. I mean, calling this unplayable would be quite the understatement. Now, the final benchmark I'm going to run is the uh, user benchmark. If you haven't tried this yet, I highly suggest you go check it out because it gives you a pretty good idea of how, what your system is, uh, well, how it's performing. After the benchmark, we end with a score of 14% in gaming, 20% in desktop, and 13% in workstation. Pretty much confirming that this system is somewhat useless. Now, it's pretty clear here in my final thoughts on this system that we are experiencing some bottlenecks. Um, either from the PCIe uh, 4x slot or the uh, CPU. Now I got some uh, GPU and CPU utilization graphs I'd like to show you. And well, it sort of looks like we are seeing a CPU bottleneck most of the time. But then again, at times the CPU and GPU are not uh, maxing out. Well, either one of them is maxing out. So I'm sort of. Uh, thinking that might be the PCIe uh, X4 slot doing that, but I'm not entirely sure. And as you can see in other tests, it's pretty clear that the CPU is uh, maxing out while the GPU is not. So Now what am I going to do with this computer? I'm honestly not sure. Um, it really just started out as a thought experiment just to see if I could still have some use out, out of the uh, Semprom 3850. Uh, I bought this new about a year ago for uh, somewhere around what would that be like $40 in American money and to be quite honest I really think I overpaid that. I wouldn't even pay $5 for this processor. It's, it does have integrated graphics and it does work for you know watching YouTube and all that but for a gaming system this processor is pretty much useless. Now the GPU though, um, although also very old and useless in some titles, I do have a video uh, I made a couple days ago, well not a couple days ago, but I uploaded one not too long ago where it did somewhat okay. I highly suggest you go check that out. Um, it's somewhere on my channel and it does a lot better with the quad core Athlon that it's paired with in that video than it does in, well this video was pair with the quad core Sempron. But I guess the final conclusion is stay away from the Sempron line and well thank you very much for watching.